Is Tai Chi a defense? Is it a martial arts to defend oneself? Is it Tai Chi? Is it ones for longevity and peace? What exactly is the purpose of Tai Chi? Tai Chi Quan it is both defending and uh, attacking. And inner strength and peace, that too? 同时又是一种内功. To, to practice inner strength, Master demonstrated this movement, which means the eternal strength, and it is much more beneficial than the martial arts itself. Today we're going to talk about Guolin Ying's universal posts. Kind of go through some of the details of uh, how he taught it. This is the only version of the universal posts that I know of that Sifu taught. He didn't teach the um, even stance universal posts. He taught the one leg forward and uh, this position here. In uh, performing the universal pose, the foot that's in front, the weight is about 80, 20. This is about the weight of the leg. Uh, on the toe, the heel is raised. The back is flat. And on the hand position, the leg, that side of the leg that is forward, the hand is forward is as well. So my left leg is forward. The left hand will be forward by a finger's length. And also, uh, the fingers are separated by a finger's length distance. So kind of imagine a imaginary box that's about a finger's length. So the side is forward, left leg forward, left arm forward, the fingers are evenly spread and the arm and shoulder and wrists are fairly level. In some of the videos that I presented where Sifu is going around and checking people's universal posts, you can see that he's uh, checking the tension in the forearms and the wrists to make sure that it's not a, a tense, rigid pose. but. Part of the practice in developing your uh, internal energy, the chi, and also just internal energy, your um, attitude, is to um, use that relaxed position and learn how to circulate that internal energy so that it's, the energy is holding your arms up. Your arms should be feeling like they're floating rather than a physical force of using your shoulder muscles to hold up your arms. And so that's the reason for checking to be sure the tension is soft. You want your muscles to be soft. It's okay to um, move around a little bit to adjust your tension. It doesn't have to be a rigid pose. And if one side gets tired, if your leg gets tired or your arm gets tired, uh, you can adjust uh, sides. So again, in adjusting the sides, if I adjust right leg forward, then the right finger will be forward by finger's length. And again, the fingers are separated. In the thumb position here, the thumb is not straight up like this, but it's curved, kind of like a tiger's mouth here. 
and relax. Okay, and again, the thumbs are not arched like that, but relax. Imagine that there's a string from the top of your head down through your bottom of your spine. So when you tuck your butt in, your back is uh, nice and flat. Find the balance point for your head. You're not forward and you're not back. It's just your head is nicely balanced. So you can long get your pose. So in the breathing, you want to just basically breathe in through your nose and down into your tantian, into your diaphragm, and then breathe out. The breathing is nice and relaxed. For your mind, um, I was a Zen practitioner for a number of years living in a Zen community, and I use the Soto Zen practice of following the thoughts like clouds. So um, instead of like occupying my mind with thought and trying to have no mind, I just allow my thoughts to pass through like cloud passing through and not be attached to the thoughts. In the beginning, you might find it difficult to do it for a very long time. So I could suggest that you do it for maybe two minutes on either side. It's a good way to start. You can set a timer. It's not, it's not like a contest or anything like that. So you should just feel comfortable and enjoy it. So when you get tired after two minutes, switch to the other side. And then slowly as you get used to making sure that your arms are nice and relaxed and soft. You don't want to have tension. If you feel like you have tension, um, the way to work with it is to kind of shift your body and find that those points where your basically your chi is getting stuck and kind of work with that so that uh, you can kind of open it up and allow that chi to make your arms float. At the end, you can just relax. You can do the universal pose after you do your warm-ups. If you're just doing a short universal pose, like Sifu would have us do the universal pose before we do a uh, group set of cha chuan. Um, but also, if you're going to do a long universal pose, like uh, Bing would stand for an hour at a time, you don't want to do your stretching and then do the universal pose, and then you'd have to do your stretching again, because by the time you finish your hour-long universal pose, you'd be all kind of stiff again. So I recommend, uh, if you're doing the short universal pose, to uh, go ahead and do your stretching first, and then do your universal pose, and then do your practice. If you're going to do a long session of universal pose, then I suggest doing that right off first. And then after you're finished, uh, you get your chi circulated, then you can do your stretching. So any questions, be sure to include them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them.